So Eric's back with us again. Hi, Eric. How are you doing, mate? Pretty good. You? Not too bad, thank you. Keeping myself busy. How about yourself? I've I've been yeah the, the, between work and and what little hobby time I've got uh, I've, I've managed to stay stay busy too. Okay, and you mentioned you did some uh, some cleaning up and snipping off sprues and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's nothing nothing Rackham based unfortunately this time around, but I'm it's basically me trying to clear off some space on my desk so I can actually get to the stuff I really want to get to instead of just keeping piles and piles of things. You're not so. you're not clipping off space marines or sprues, are you? Uh, not this time. <laughs> not this time. I know your love of the uh, Warhammer forty k universe. So yeah, I thought. Of... <laughs> although, although technically, uh, I do have a friend who is uh, trying to do a charity auction for Adepticon and who is basically taking uh, random Space Marines as long as the, the one of the shoulder pads is, is blank uh, to be used for a uh, charity raffle. So oh. I'm like, if I have Space Marines laying around, I'll definitely try to get them assembled and painted up for the for them to be able to raffle them off because I figured it's for a good cause. So this is Adepticon like for next year? Uh, there's, there's basically the non-Adepticon. Right, okay. But uh, if, if I can find the, uh, the the links, I could definitely share it with you. But yes, I thought it was a good idea and, you know, a good cause. So I figured cool. might as well. Okay, we should, we should share events and that kind of thing in the future when things pop up on the on the net, we can sort of spread the word uh, yeah, through our channel here. Okay, so, so we're just going to go cover the news because there's been quite a few things that have come up and cropped up over the last uh, two weeks. Uh, actually, the, the big announcement yesterday was the Confrontation Club app is now available on the iOS devices. So I've been a tester, I've been a supporter of the Confrontation Club now for the past number of months and um, Gilberto and his, uh, his good friend, the Executor, I think, um, is his handle. Uh, yeah, they've finally released the app now on iOS and they've submitted it to Google, but it's just taking some time for it to be um, be released. Eric did try to check for that before we recorded and it's still not up there yet, but it should be out very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the uh, Dust app also has the same issue. It's, it takes a lot longer. Or there's no actual, no way of knowing when the Iowa, the Android version gets updated. So it's sent and it happens at some point. And just to make, just to confirm, it's it's free. So, um, but if you want to support the guys, uh, you can make a uh, donation to them, uh, which uh, me and a group of other people are doing because we want to support the app and make sure it's around and keeps alive for as long as possible. Because once you start using it, you'll realize how incredibly useful a tool it is and how beautiful it looks. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, just to look at, now I've been just building armies, uh, doing Midnor now because I'm <laughs> officially now a Midnor player. So uh, it's going to be in the oh, are you France. now? Yes, yes, yes. I, I've been uh, I've uh, I've been seduced by the the dark dwarves this time. So um, okay, I'm looking at building lists and that kind of thing. You can save it on your app, and you can create your own username, a unique username, maybe something you used back in the um, uh, day, Confederation right. forums or whatever back in the day. So it's really good. So get onto that as soon as you can, if you have an iOS device. Um, so second up, we've got a wonderful uh, new design. I think this is the first initial design that uh, Confrontation Continuum have released from Dennis Gornella. He's a very talented uh, miniature designer. And he presents the first Ducal Guard of Cadwellan uh, based on a drawing from Gary Chalk. And now this is the very first one I've seen. I haven't seen any other... Prior to this, I've seen a lot of the art designs that they've uh, been producing on the on the Facebook and Instagram under Confrontation Continuum. But uh, Temple of the West is the actual official company name, I believe. Yes, um, I think they showed off the Gladiator re resculpt, which was cool. But this is the actual yes. you know, brand new, never no no resculpt, brand new concept. And it's it looks it does look really good. No, you're right, actually, Eric. That's right, the Gladiator, because I, I really hated the, the initial one that Rackham uh, brought out. It was terrible. Yeah. It was not their best. I will give you the yeah. math. <laughs> it was not as bad as some of the older sculpts, but it's still... Yeah. It, you, somehow it snuck through QA. I don't understand how, but it, it did. Uh, I mean, if you remember the old sculpts like Karen the Apostle or... Um, my God, what's the old lion with that weird shield shape based? It wasn't the... Um, the living legend, but uh, Sardar, the original Sardar model. Oh, 
yeah. looked horrible. I believe it was a contest on the old dragon painting forums back in the day where they took old Rackham sculpts and tried to make them better just with a really good paint job. And that one had been voted as there's nothing you can do with it. It right. just looks terrible. I think Owen's after that model, actually, that particular model. I think yeah. he is, which yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, know what he's going to do with it. But <laughs> but I know what you mean. I mean. Yeah, the very first edition, second edition models, some were a bit bit off. But um, Yeah, they were. But yeah, that's that's an, a really a really exciting looking uh, first entry or second entry for the Continuum line. I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. They are going to be cast in metal, uh, which makes me even more excited. So once these become available, we'll keep you posted and where you can buy those in the future. I don't think they're ready to go to retail yet, but they're, they're well underway and looks like um, we've got something to be really excited about. Uh, now, next up in news, there was a post by THM uh, Scenery, Thierry. I think he's from Canada yeah, too, isn't he? Isn't he? Uh, he Basically. was originally a Rackham painter who moved to Canada, yes. So the TH Miniatures is actually uh, showing off the busts uh, they're actually based on the Catawalong uh, NPC artwork. So all the artwork in the Catawalong uh, Player's Handbook actually has busts or like just headshots of the various NPCs. And that's what he's doing as, as busts. So. Yeah, yeah, he's a very, very talented guy. Amazing painter, uh, terrain maker. You name it, he's got the whole, he's got the whole wheel of uh, talents. Uh, so Terry, that was really exciting. So I hope that's uh, a really successful venture for him. Um, and also, oh, I shouldn't forget Silvano. I've, I've almost forgot about him. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure he'll be back and, and show us some more cool stuff because yeah, yeah, he did show us some stuff, didn't he? He showed a lot of stuff, yeah. And um, I apologize for just remembering about that now. But yeah, a lot of resin masters have been sent out. Well, not masters, but the actual official products being sent out. Owen's got his copy. He's really happy with it. He did a size yes. comparison to one of his other uh, original confrontation models that were pretty close. Detail looks really fine. I was talking to Silvano about it because I'm not a big fan of resin myself, but he assured me that the quality is so good and, and the details are so, so fine that uh, I'll be really impressed. So I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a copy of something to have a look at it. Uh, so uh, that's uh, Cernos, Cernos Studios, I believe. Cernos, Cernos Studios, yeah. Yeah, so go and check that on Facebook um, and you'll find out there. I believe he also showed previews of some of the other models he's, gay, he's working on right now and gave us a quick update as to what projects he's along with. Uh, there, He's planning on doing a... Uh, Karatis clone uh, war staff, which has me pretty excited. He's shown at least the, the main character or at least the, the work in progress to main character, but there's also, also going to be a musician and a uh, war, uh, banner bearer. So that should be interesting. Yes, so the, the artwork is, looks really amazing. I mm -hmm. think it's actually, it's actually based on official designs from the studio back in the day. I'm not sure it's an official design or at least one that hasn't been approved, but it's definitely based on a Karatis. Someone just, just decided to do, take a, a Karatis and, and go nuts with it, and it, it looked amazing. Yeah, well, that, that design is actually a card that you could, you could collect. It's one of those collector cards. So, yeah, nice. Silvano okay. he was after that card. He must have got it somehow or whatever. You know what he's like. <laughs> yes. He broke a deal somewhere with somebody. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, that's uh, so basically. I don't know if that the, the new character is going to have uh, leadership, but uh, just the idea of having a Cypher Lucan, you know, war staff based Cypher Lucan in a war staff that's that should be very interesting to see on the battlefield. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Karatis. Uh, that's that's one of the that's probably the only profile that dragged me back into playing Durs again if I, if I venture back. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I really love the old models. The original models are really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, in other news, we've got uh, Anacron Workshop. Uh, he's a really talented guy. You've probably seen his stuff on Facebook in the 3.5 Fanatics group. But he's doing some kind of STL file uh, for the hybrid game in uh, really nice terrain features like doors and that kind of thing. So um, he's got a wonderful painted sample um, here in the 3.5 Fanatics group of those two types of doors. I think one for the hybrid game and one for Nemesis, because Nemesis had those sort of thinner, you know, 
tile maybe shape. it's a, it's maybe that the, the double sized door and the regular sized doors this is probably more like it but yes i know he'd shown uh previews of it some time ago but i had we hadn't heard anything since and now it's finally available on his store so yeah cool. this this has been very busy two weeks yeah the but absolutely yeah these creators are just pumping out the stuff and talking about um confrontation continuum there are some beta rule beta rules uh now that are in testing uh from kyle kyle gibson uh, the man behind the company at uh, temple of the west so he showed a teaser of the cover of the beta rules that he's now working on as a working draft. And we can only hope that we can get our hands on a PDF version that we can also try with our existing collection. So people who have existing collections or models from their old computation days with the cards, they will be compatible, he said, uh, along with all his new miniatures that he's releasing with new cards that can be compatible with this game system. Um, so yeah, that's a really, really promising and, uh, you know, look at what's going to happen in the future. I don't know when, but you know, the more people who can play test it for him before it gets released officially, yeah. it looks like it's going to be an actual book that you can buy. That's not going to Kickstarter. It'll be just available through his store. They have faction books and everything as well. So we wish him all the best of luck with that because that looks really, really exciting. Your yeah. thoughts on that, mate? Um, having gone through the beta tests for Confrontation Phoenix when Komen uh, not was involved and the Confrontation Resurrection when Sanito was involved, I am curious to see what this one is going to be like. I, I would like to get my hands on the better rules as well and see which direction he's taking things into. Cool. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing what, uh, what comes up with that. But the main uh, part of the show, because we had the community members vote on the faction of choice for the next instalment of the law um, for today, and it, they came up with, uh, to my surprise, the Droons. Yes, thank you guys. You have picked a faction which has barely any lore that was available in Cry Havoc <laughs> or anywhere else. So you have decided to pick a faction that I didn't really have any a lot of meat to work with and then threw questions at me that were in some cases really oddly specific so yeah um fun times thank you so much <laughs> over to you eric <laughs> my hands are clean i don't know i don't know anything about the drones I've not, nothing i don't know anything i just know they're dark uh yeah uh yeah the original bits of knowledge we got from those uh, I believe we had maybe a blister or two released back in the day. And then when Cryavic, uh, sorry, not Cryavic, uh, Ragnarok hit the shelves, at least in French, uh, that's when we got a lot more into what the, a, a closer look at what the defection was like. Uh, again, we didn't get much lore or much story lore until uh, Cryavic with the Issue one and issue four had the backgrounds about the uh, the Celts, and that's when we saw the, the way they split between Cesares and other tribes and the Druids, uh, what caused that, and so on and so forth. But uh, basically, Ragnarok introduced them as these weird, reclusive barbarians that lived in a you know un uh, un uh, um, un unhospitable time forests where they lived in um, they call them uh, troglodyte village so a lot of uh, caves not caves but actual residences carved into the actual stone walls of a mountain or it's just it's it was a very odd type of feeling to it um, basically there was a lot of uh, the, the 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 Celts were the, the Druids were introduced as as basically a bunch of barbarians who are trying to take down the gods. Uh, again, that kind of links a lot with uh, the you know, the Devourers, and that's also why the Devourers and the Druids did. Even when the Devourers are still considered to be one of the Destiny factions, they actually could take Druids as allies. Uh, so basically there's also very limited resources in the forest because it's that terrible of a place uh, so they keep the population of each settlement very strict uh, and under various numbers 
any over any member anyone who actually goes over is basically devoured. So the drones are actually cannibals. So yes, I guess they, they looked at the the whole uh, Jita, you know, Beam Workshop barbarians, like the uh, the Norse and the uh, the raiders, and went, we want our we want some evil barbarians too, but let's make them really evil and really just like almost repulsive fluff wise to give a reason for for why they're evil and they're then well they're bad guys. So yeah, that's that was basically my take on it. Um, so yes, the Druins were basically a offshoot of the Celts when the barbarians, the, the human barbarians landed on Arklash, uh, the continent was already populated by giants, the centaurs, and um, minotaurs, which then uh, they had their own gods and the humans actually had left wherever they came from to, uh, to escape uh, Basically, I think it was a war between gods or gods had done something and the humans were basically trying to, to escape from it. Uh, and so the, they came to conflict with the locals. Uh, finally, uh, after battles and battles and battles, the, the local gods came in and actually brokered peace with the humans. And the human leader actually uh, became the consort of their goddess which caused the, the original consort of the goddess to get jealous, uh, split in half. So basically he had his own personality, which was normal. And then his, his jealous evil or self split into a different personality. And that, that one actually kidnapped the king and, and hit it, uh, which meant that the humans, half the humans actually went, wait a second, let's, let's go follow the king. And the other half went, no, we're good here. We, we finally at peace. We finally found, you know, we are finally in a safe place. Let's let's not rock the boat. So the ones who left actually left seeking the king, uh, established a different settlement, had the, the men go out to seek, to keep seeking the guy, the, 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 the lost king. But when they came back to the settlement, they had been raised and uh, clues had been left leading that to leading them to believe that the gods of the the original inhabitants were the ones behind it, or at least had caused this. Uh, whereas it wasn't, it was a, again a frame job by the evil half of the consort. So basically, in a way, seeing this, the, the humans had actually you know swore revenge and decided to go and hide in the darkest places where they could foment revenge against the gods. And that's when they found Skatak, which was the actual evil half of the consort, and and which twisted them towards the, the drones we know. Uh, so that was basically it. Uh, for the however long they've been raiding out of the forest, uh, part of them is, are still looking for the king. Uh, but in short, they basically raid for uh, slaves, for resources, for everything. And they are, they're a scourge. This, this is why the Subfactions for the druids are called the druid scourges. It's what they are. Uh, each of them has a specific role to play in the greater scheme of their organization, but that's basically everyone else tries to avoid them as much as possible. Um, the fluff we had so far is basically that if you ever, if the druids ever raid you, you might as well hope to die before they catch you, because if they catch you, you will suffer. They, they are not kind to the, the, the people they enslave. Um, so yes, uh, they also believe that the best way to keep um, the, 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 um, sorry, the, the way they actually uh, try to uh, injure the, the, the various gods is by keeping the souls of their followers from reaching them. So if someone gets tortured enough before dying, this and, and, Basically, by the soul is bound to the body, it keeps the soul from going to the afterlife and going to you know empower the god. So, this is what they're trying to do by this you know the, the, through torture and and the various evil acts that they perform on whoever they raid. Um, so again, not a lot of fluff, mainly because uh, again, there's only a few pages in the. Uh, the Ragnarok book, and this generally just broad overview because then 
we had one more article about the actual history, which was the history of the Celts. Uh, that was a two-parter in Cry Havoc. Uh, we had otherwise the uh, sub-faction, which was the uh, Horde of Doomscape. Uh, that was basically in one of the gaming aids and one of the earlier magazines. And a, an overview of the various uh, scourges in one of the other magazines. And that was pretty much all we had that was June focused in cry havoc. Um, so unfortunately that's, this might be a bit short, um, but I can go over some of the questions we got, uh, which reminds me, we did get a couple of questions after the last episode regarding theirs. Uh, I'm going to go over them quickly just to tie people over, but generally I will probably try to go into more details about those questions next time we do theirs, which Durs has enough meat that we could probably you know, go over them at least one or maybe twice more. But unfortunately, whatever fluff there was for Druin's Rackham didn't put out much, sadly. Um, so for the Druins, Headley asked more details about the Arteth and Izateth uh, in the desert. Uh, I do believe that Age of Ragnarok had a bit more about that, but I'm not quite sure... I think that might have been a recon, a retcon, uh, where the uh, the pests, the flesh, and the uh, turret tigers were technically supposed to be those. Uh, so it might have been something else entirely originally, but that's what we ended up with. Um, the Andocris uh, were basically the equivalent of not quite bounty hunters. Uh, the biopsists go out with a team to go search for samples. The Andocris, the Andro. This tongue twister were basically uh, the equivalent of hunter killer drone uh, clones. They were out to go uh, seek out a dangerous target, tar the dangerous target or a potentially dangerous target for Durs faction for some reason, either political or whatever. And their job was to take it out. They weren't there to take samples. They were there just to eliminate the target. Uh, I believe that we never got really got more of that because the, I don't know, that was my, been a manager, managerial decision. Uh, I do recall seeing something about the star clone of the program being uh, Kitharan and Sar, which was a shadow in Confrontation 2. And since he had been killed, he had been defeated by his actual uh, nemesis, which was uh, Avangorok. Uh, that meant that since he'd been MIA, presumably MIA or KIA, uh, there's basically the, the there's faction commanding whatever leadership decided to put the entire project on hold. So that which, again, kind of fluff reason, but it was never stated officially. I think it was just a quick response in a forum by one of the designers. I thought it was kind of cool to do it that way. They could have just made it official and it would solve the problem. But it had it was a, an idea that had potential. Um, we have, so Flavio is asking questions as well about Durs. Uh, is there a lore regarding the Beast Nemesis? The Beast Nemesis is a shadow from one of the Incantitia, the travel journal packs. It was meant to be a Nemesis. Uh, the shadows were basically linked to the incarnation, the whole adventuring little campaign things they did. Uh, some of the packs, some of the some of them are linked to specific characters. Some of them are linked to specific adventures. The Beast Nemesis is linked to the. So is that a quick interruption there? And the my son just walked into the room. So sorry about that, Eric. Please continue. Uh, no worries. Uh, so yeah, so basically the Beast Nemesis was linked to one of the scenarios from the Durs scenario pack. Uh, there was a quick uh, scenario campaign. I think it's four or five scenarios called the, the Code Nemesis. Uh, in which the adventurer and his his team uh, find shelter from a desert storm and what seems to be an abandoned laboratory, uh, which suddenly comes around, comes to life around them as they explore it, and then as they try to find a way out, they have to face this beast, uh, which is trying to kill them as as they're trying to find the last switch to you know open the exit. Uh, Again, this is a bit of a Rackham recycling their own ideas because they did do Nemesis some years later and it was a very similar concept. So I think this may have been a, a, a embryonic idea of what Nemesis and hybrid would come 
to do later. Uh, that means that the Nemesis Beast would also probably be a sort of proto-Nemesis clone, which came from the uh, hybrid expansion. Again, nothing, nothing definite, but this is definitely me putting things together and saying, yeah, this, this is the logical conclusion to this. Uh, and acting, asking about the Code Noct Noctis lab, uh, which would be, yes, uh, Salyas's uh, lab, mainly because according to the faction pack, that is the name of his laboratory and he is based in Kedwalong. So that was the answers for the last bit of Durs fluff. I do apologize for the slight uh, tangent. Uh, but going over the questions for the actual drone fluff we have. Uh, so Flavio once again asks uh, if there's any lore reason for drones to only have minotaurs and none of the other uh, humanoid beings, so giants and flowers and everything. Um, again, the drones did not get along with, the, or, or at least turned their backs to the original inhabitants, which was the, uh, the giants and centaurs and minotaurs. Why they have minotaurs? I don't really know. Maybe it's descendants of a captured minotaur or something. Uh, why they wouldn't have giants and, and centaurs, I believe it's probably because the, those would follow uh, Daniel and the drones have turned their backs on that. If that's official, I wouldn't know, but this is my, my take on it. Um, I do remember there's at least one tribe of centaurs that got that was destro destroyed or that died out and that Acheron turned into their own uh, undead centaurs uh, so that's also something entirely different but uh, that's why Acheron has those uh, but no there's no actual reasons but the uh, Hound of uh, Skathak is actually a four more beast and not an actual regular creature so it doesn't have the four more attribute to have the auras of the four mores, but it is definitely not a natural beast. Uh, so Headley was asking about Rugreth, the Ogre of the Black Woods. Um, that was an oddly specific question. I did have to find, to, to, to search around a bit more for the answer to that one. Uh, thankfully, Cry Havoc did do a uh, overview of the various Dune Scourges, which uh, Rugreth is actually a leader of. Uh, sadly, not all factions got that chance. I know the goblins didn't get one, uh, and I think the orcs didn't get one, and maybe others, but this was really helpful, mainly because uh, Rugreth uh, is actually described in a quick paragraph in that piece of fluff. Um, he is actually a persecutor champion, turn, a persecutor turned champion, and then turned leader of that faction. He's called that because he has taken up uh, cannibalism on a massive scale as in he will devour the, his dead enemies uh, according to, to whatever fluff he's devoured over 200 of them so far he's actually gained massive grown size and intellect uh, he claims that every time he eats the flesh of his enemies he actually gains a bit of their insight and therefore he, he has become more dangerous and so on and so forth so yes it is more of a description uh, but he is he is a cannibal and he's a drone, so not a pleasant person to be around, I guess. Uh, Manoa was asking if the drones ever found out that four more deceived them. Again, this is basically the uh, Skatak, which was the evil slash darker side of the Dan Danu's consort. Um, we don't know yet. We don't, there, there was nothing told that uh, to lead us to believe that they did. So they're still following blindly, or if they've learned, they've accepted the fact that it's, it's, it's again, we don't know for sure. I won't say they still don't know, and that would lead us, that could lead to a really like, potential uprising, a potential inner conflict with, within the drones, which could be interesting. Uh, so Owen was asking for everything about the drones. Again, there's not that much fluff and cry havoc. Uh, you have a description, an overview of the scourges. You have a two-parter, which is the uh, your origins of the Celts, so Cesares and the uh, drones. And you have a quick bit of fiction about the, it's an actual, it's, it's not actual 
rules or stories. It's just a, a June raid. There's nothing actually other than, you know, how the Junes will raid a village in it. So not really useful for broader lore questions. Uh, and then the Gaming Aid, which has the, uh, the Horde of Dunescape. I have seen someone, some discussion on the uh, Confrontation English Discord about Dunescape, uh, as one at least one person is asking why it's called a Horde, uh, since there's an actual minimum point cost for models. Uh, the Horde of Dunescape is called, well, Dunescape, first of all, was a Cesar city. Which or settlement which got uh, assaulted or besieged by a Druun and I guess uh, Devourer team up um, and the entire thing went basically as you'd expect. Uh, this is when one of the Cesar heroes, uh, the one with the vocal axe Bale, the centaur, it was actually a human uh, and slay, slew one of the Dunescape uh, former leaders and took his axe. Uh, the axe cursed him, and when it was taken up, uh, he turned into a centaur. Uh, except that he likes the axe enough that he decided to keep using it and stay a centaur and not try to break the curse. Uh, but basically, yes, the, it's a, called a horde. The, the Doomscape is called a horde because it was a a horde of enemy, you know, of, of devourers and um, druids that went and then tried to wipe the city or the settlement off the map. Uh, someone is asking, oh, so Kendall Williams is asking, why do the Lanifs have such skinny arms and why they're separate from the bodies? Uh, that is more of a production question. It's a question of why the model was cut that way and why it was sculpted that way. I can't answer that. Uh, I do know that the Lanifs are basically women who have decided to rebel against the status quo in June society and not just uh, be stuck inside a cave popping out children. Uh, and the Druun leaders have decided to let them out, let them be because there's nothing you could do to them that the force won't already do to them as the force is that harsh and they can be used as an advanced guard. So basically an advanced warning if something actually comes in to the forest to try and get rid of the drones. So it's a it's a win-win for the drone leaders. You get rid of rebellious people and you can use them to basically whittle down opposition that comes your way. So that works. Yes, but yes, the question as to the, the, the why the arms are separate, I honestly don't know. Maybe they wanted to do more. That's, that's what is beyond the scope of anything I could answer. Uh, Tony Davidson is asking if there were plans for more undead drones or just a few that they made. Uh, again, that is a question of production and a question of planning and management decisions. I wouldn't know. There is at least one drone faction which actually deals with the uh, uh, where they hide, they, they enter the bodies of their dead. So there might be more, there might be ghosts, there might be other things, but unfortunately, I wouldn't know for sure. I was never privy to the actual management, management decision. I was just a, a, a fan who really loved the fluff and who got to actually do some freelance work on said fluff. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so yes, and Carl Jensen, who was asking about how Doomscape came to be. So yes, again, I kind of answered that quickly uh, talking about it. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of information about it. There's some, I, I might actually take a look, quick look at the, um, the Barbarian Adventure Pack. I might have something about that. I know that there is uh, a, one of the adventures in it had to do with uh, the adventurer entering a, an area that had been cursed and fighting off the, uh, destroying the ghost and the commander who have been keeping the area unsafe so but you know what in a second i'll ch check it out right now i figured if anything it could be uh zero packs plane of tears okay so while, uh, while you do while you have a look for that eric i'm just going to read the pros and cons on the competition club uh app that talks about the celts of the Druin clan and each sure. each uh, faction they give like a pro and con after the fluff 
flavor text at the beginning. So the pros are their aggressive play style with some lasting power thanks to racial and other abilities. There are reliable troops um, who can take a punch and can offer a variety in combat. They have balanced magi magicians who offer flexibility in list building. Uh, so they're their pros. And the cons are that they are a limited range of models, which limits options, a lack of extreme strength or resilience, which may be required to overcome specific opponents. Would you, would you, are, you, are you a player of the Druids at all back in the day? Eric? I didn't. I got to face them early when they didn't have, well, they never got a lot of releases, but uh, before a lot of the their later ones. So I think most of the June lists I faced were there's two or three four mores, a bunch of persecutors, and that was it for the most part. Uh, oh, yes, and the archers. The archers were some of the most dangerous archers I've seen in pretty much any game. Uh, they had the, the the bonus actually granted them a better uh, skill roll on their shooting. Uh, yes, their the composite bows actually did that. Okay, so they're going to salt fire and bullseye as their abilities, yeah. Uh, assault fire and bullseye. I believe that was now, just precision. Point Sorry, five. precision. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. I will open that up. That page. Uh, darkness drones. Uh, D archers, archers, archers. Why do I? And the profile oh, we talked about before, the undead drones. I think they're probably my favorite models of all the range of the drones themselves. They, they, they look the good. Rates. Yeah, they're yeah, the rates were. I yeah, painted those for Silvano, by the way. There oh. you go. He got his two, got two mentions now. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you enjoyed um, those, Silvano? I enjoyed painting those ones. They're really good. Yes. Uh, okay, so I can't seem to open that up on the original, the, the, my usual page. Uh, but the in the equipment section of the uh, drone archer, there should be a mention that the composite bows they use give them, they can reroll their sixes, their fives like they were sixes or something like that. So that gives them a much better chance of hitting. Uh, their range isn't that great. Their shooting ability is, is okay. But the fact that they have toxic and they can use toxic on range attacks as well means that they are they're mean. They are a dangerous, dangerous faction. Actually, let me. There we go. I second page. My first page doesn't work. The other one went. Yes. Okay. So uh, they've got a range of twenty to sixty centimeters with a shooting ability of three. So for a medium hit, so of up to 40 centimeters, they need a four plus to hit you. So that's an average roll on a D6. Uh, a five is equal to a six on their shooting ring and their shooting rolls and can be re-rolled. So yeah, that hurts. And they have toxic one, which you can use on their range attacks. Uh, their range attacks is strength four normally. So they hit you with a strange strength four, four range attack and then get to make a strength one attack on which you don't have resilience. Yeah. It it hurts. It really does. Uh, but yes, their regular skills is toxic, and that was it. So the, uh, the precision firing and the assault firing, uh, whichever one you said, is definitely the 3.5 update. Wow. So all, the, all, all shooters will have that. But yeah. It's it's painful. You do not you do not mess with drone archers. Interesting. Okay. Wonderful. So yeah. So yes. Uh, looking over the snare packs for the the barbarians, the, the plane of tears. Uh, there is a three scenario section regarding the cleansing of the curse of that section of the planes. Uh, there is a quick three, four acts of the uh, the sword of uh, the clay sword, which is probably an art old artifact, which was no longer valid in C3 anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then there's the rite of passage. So yes, um, interesting, but nothing specific to druids, sadly. OK. Well, thank you very much, Eric, for your interesting in-depth breakdown of the drones or what little information we have of them. So they remain a mystery. 
they're yeah, that's not as mysterious as say the Ophidians, which barely got anything. Yeah. But we, you know, I, again, we have a bit more depth regarding the factions, at least sub factions, which is nice. But otherwise, there's not much detail that's out there, sadly. Okay. Well, if people want to continue this discussion about the drones and maybe uh, converse with other members in our community, you can do that through either the Discord channel. I'll leave a link in the description notes. Uh, we've got about 150 members there, and they have uh, faction by faction sort of you know subgroups that you can go in there and start talking about the drones or other factions if you like. Uh, if you've got any questions you want to ask Eric at all about the Druins or any other factions, you can leave it in the comments section here on, in the YouTube channel or head over to the Facebook group at uh, Fan uh, Confrontation 3.5 Fanatics and um, uh, start a discussion there. So I think we'll leave it there for today. Eric, thank you very sure. much for your time sure. this evening. I look forward to seeing what what other what next, what's next faction the community will ask me to take a look into. What, I, what I've decided to do is have half of it on YouTube and half on the Facebook group. So, so okay. far, the Orcs of Behemoth, I think, is the, the faction that might, we might be doing next. Okay, so one of the more recent factions, but I might have to just jam that one into the rest of the Orcs because... Maybe we can just combine them all together. I think, yeah, I think yeah. it, make, it makes sense because there's not a lot of Orc fluff either, so... Right, okay. Well, that sounds good. Well, I think this might be on the menu next time. We'll see how, how the community <laughs> <laughs> reacts yep. to that. Yes, if you vote, you guys can, can still influence the vote. That's it. Okay, so get your votes in. Thanks. And um, yeah, go to that YouTube channel, go to the Crown of Command podcast and go to the community section where you can find that poll and you can start voting on the factions listed there. Okay, Eric, well, thank you very right. much again for your time. Take My care pleasure. of yourself, mate. And thank we'll you. talk to you again next time. Okay, bye-bye. All right.